What's up guys, I got a really, really cool video for you here today. This is going to show you an amazing workflow that you can use to not only expedite your modeling process, but also get really clean and visually appealing details by, well, basically doing nothing. Yes, this has to do with trim sheets, but I want to show you a bit more than uh, I may have let on before. So uh, check this out. Notice I have these little these little black highlights here going around and these are actually trim sheets if I zoom in here notice how we have detail right here and if I turn off that trim sheet texture set you're gonna see that detail disappears same for up here we have a little like ridge detail in there and if I turn it off it's gone this is not model geo this is not real geometry at all all this is all these pieces are here is a simple like a uh, plane basically or set of planes going around as a matter of fact if I go in here and select all of those trim details and isolate it you're gonna see that this detail is nothing more than just a, um, a set of faces going around the object that defines the detail it's not real geometry it's not modeled in it's simply a texture and if I go here into material view you're gonna see exactly how this looks all it is is a texture going around these pieces so let's go ahead and, and um, change this real quick. Let me add a new material maybe. Cool, here we go. So you're going to see this model is actually extremely simple. If I turn off those trims, notice this is nothing more than a cylinder with a few bevels and a few little slices going around it. But the moment I turn these trims on, look at how much more detail this model looks. And this probably took me all of like two minutes to do. So I'm going to show you not only how to do this, but also how you can take these details and use them inside of Substance Painter or Unreal Engine or whatever. So let me start up a new scene here and we're just going to do something very simple. Let me add in a cylinder. We'll scale the cylinder up a bit. And then we'll go ahead and sharpen it and then maybe put like a chamfer here on the top. Okay. And then just to make this a bit softer, we can go here and bevel that kind of get that cool effect going on and then maybe we could go in here and make like a little slice or something very simple and then all we need is like a defining bevel around the ridge so what I'm gonna do is drop a small little bevel here just to have a nice outline so check this out guys I don't have to do any additional modeling at this point all I need to do is use the detail I already have so let me quickly apply that boolean and apply this boolean here cool so say I wanted to put a detail around this piece here. I could model it in, or I could just use a trim texture, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into face mode. I'm going to alt click on these faces and we're gonna separate them. So shift D to duplicate, right click, and then P to separate by selection. Then we're gonna have a completely separate piece here, okay? And then what I wanna do is I wanna scale it on the Z, but I need to reset the origin point. So let me right click set origin to geometry and then just scale that a bit on the Z and you're gonna notice we have some Z fighting going on so to fix that what I do is I simply select everything in edit mode and then press alt s to scale along the normals like that so to add the detail what we need to do is go here and select this piece go into material mode and we're just gonna tab into edit mode here and select everything now I'm gonna be using decal machine to do this you don't need decal machine you can do this manually by adding your own material and assigning the textures to it if you'd like. But uh, with the decal machine, I can just go in here and choose one of my trim sheets. I'll just use the example sheet that comes with it. Okay. And then we just click here. And what we can do is we can scroll through these effects by holding control. So there's a bunch of different details here I could use. So maybe I'll go with um, this detail right here or maybe one of the other ones like this, right? And just like that, we have a detail basically doing nothing. So let's go and add in yet another detail. Maybe I could go down here, drop a loop cut, control B, duplicate this set, separate it with the P key, and then we could do the same exact thing here. We can just add yet another detail. So we'll go back to this example sheet and just find like a detail like that, and we're done. And then, like I said, you probably want to scale this out just a bit to avoid any sort of Z fighting. So Alt S to move it a bit. And there we go. So you could keep doing this over and over until you have as many details as you want. But what I want to do now is show you how you can use this and texture it outside of Blender. 
Okay, first of all, for whatever reason, decal machine assigns separate materials each time you do a trim. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, I'm not sure. But you can see we have two different materials, but it's referencing the same set of textures. So I'm just going to give this one the same exact material on both so we're not using like multiple materials for the detail. As for the base mesh, we need its own separate material for that one. So I'm going to add a new material here, and you can name it whatever you want. You can change the color if you want. It uh, doesn't really matter. Same for this little piece on the inside. Give it the same material. Okay. And now what we need to do is we need to export everything and bring it inside of Substance Painter. Okay, so what I do for this is really easy. The first thing I do is I, um, let me hide these two details right here. Okay, so let me hide this one and let me hide this one. So the first thing I do is I join everything together. So I'm going to make the segment count set to 1. Okay, Control J to join it. And just for demonstration, I'm just going to do a quick Smart UV Project. I normally wouldn't do it this way, but I want to save time in the video, so we'll do a quick and easy unwrap for the base model. doesn't matter too much here. And then what I want to do is I want to join these little details here to the mesh as well. You technically don't have to, it's just something I do, it doesn't really matter. So Control J to join that. And now we're going to have one single mesh here with two different texture sets. So one is the base material for the object, and one is the base material for the trim sheets. Makes sense, okay? And I can even show you this one for the trims and this material is for the base object. Makes sense? Cool, so now all we need to do is basically just uh, give this a triangulate modifier to avoid any complications and we can export this as an FBX and bring it into Substance Painter. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go to File, Export, FBX, and we'll go to, go to Desktop and just export this as example it doesn't really matter cool so let's go over here into substance painter and let me add in uh, or start a new scene here so what we need to do is we need to go to uh, that fbx file to select it so it's going to be um, right here okay 4096 for the document resolution is fine now this is where people kind of get confused as to how you use the trims well all these trim sheets are are simply a set of textures right so what we need to do is load in those textures. Now, mine are in a custom folder for decal machine. I'll show you the usual path for that though. So this is the default path for decal machine. If you're not using decal machine, you can just load in the textures wherever your textures are located. Since I'm using the decal machine trim sheets, the textures are in the decal machine folder. So this is where you could find it, but I have a custom path for mine. So we're gonna go into the decals folder, okay? I'm gonna go to assets and then trims. And since I use the example sheet, the one that comes with the decal machine, all I need to do is scroll down and find the maps that are associated with it. If I go here into the large icons, you can see that we have a normal map. We have, you know, height maps, curvature maps, things like that. All we need here is the normal, the curvature, and the AO, okay? That's all we need. So we're going to load all of those in. So to do that, you just click on this Import Bake Maps button and load them in there. So we'll select them. And once you've loaded them in, all you have to do is click OK. So super easy. And now you're just going to have the, um, the object, right? But we can't currently see those details. Now, the reason being is because we need to go over to our um, trim sheet material right here. I'm going to go to the Texture Set Settings and load in the maps that are associated because remember these details are simply a set of textures and we haven't yet loaded in those textures so here we'll click on the normal map aiming occlusion and the curvature and if you were doing this in like unreal engine or whatever i presume it's the same exact strategy so you do that and you're going to see it updates no problem at all now you can kind of see the power of this workflow i can get really intricate details by doing basically nothing and that's why this workflow is just amazing. So now that you've done that, you can, you know, give it its own custom material here. So maybe we give it like a material like that. And look at that, it looks really good. Maybe we'll do a different one just to make it pop a bit more. So we could do like this one here, for example. And you can see those nice curvature effects as well. And then for the base material, we just click on this one. And if I want to change the base material, for the barrel, what I can do is maybe give this, I don't know, like a plastic material, drag that in, maybe change the color to white, 
and there we go. This is the exact strategy that I use to get these details on my original model here. As you can see, all it is is a set of textures which looks a lot better than just having a simple strip of a black color on it. See the difference? So much more powerful and really makes the model pop. So that's it. There's no sort of caveat here. There's no tricks or, you know, complex things you need to do. All you need to do is take some set of faces on the model, duplicate them, separate them, and then run a trim sheet across it. And you can get yourself some really clean detail by basically doing nothing. And I absolutely love this new workflow. I've been using it a lot. And you can get some pretty badass results really quickly. And like I said, you can use this inside of Unreal Engine or whatever you want to use it in. Super useful, really good workflow. Now, if you guys want to learn how to make this thing from scratch, this is actually a tutorial for our coaching and community program on our site. It's up and it's available now. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description for it. But I had to show you this workflow because it's so powerful and is something I would really recommend using um, if you find the opportunity. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you have any sort of additional input on this workflow, I'd love to hear it. But this has been working well for me so far, and hopefully it will for you as well. So I'll see you in the next video.